Stuff is a product designed to keep your cool. Hey Sharks, I'm Chase. Our company is Chill Systems and this is the Chiller. It's a portable beverage cooler with freezing gel built in. And... <laughs> hey Sharks. This is Brian. Sorry I'm late, I had to buy ice. Oof, the Chiller doesn't need ice. Man, I had to stop at the inconvenience store. Now I gotta break this up. I put... <laughs> I put the uh -huh. chiller in my freezer last night, loaded my favorite drinks before I left, and now they're ice cold. These drinks will be cold in mm, a while. <sighs> this chills many types of cans and bottles, even big bottles, like champagne. This cooler can hold all that. Well, sure. Look at the size of it. Yeah. It's super heavy, too. The chiller is the future of portable beverage cooling. Enjoy hours of ice cold drinks anywhere. Save time, money, and the environment. Oh boy. Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> Good thing we at Chill Systems are offering a more sustainable solution. Choosing a chiller reduces waste of clean water and single-use plastics. And we proudly donate a portion of every purchase to support clean water projects around the world. And you can too. Partner with us. We're seeking $150,000 for 15% equity. And together, we can change, change chilling forever. forever. Sharks, you each have samples complete with chill drinks. Chill. So this doubles. You can either do cans. Yep. Or you take the cans out like I just did, and then it's for a bottle. That's right. Oh, it's that's incredibly genius. versatile. It only holds three cans. Right. I mean. I don't know about you, but I'll get through this in about 45 minutes. Sure, and you know, Kevin, we've heard that feedback before from macho men on the internet. Only three beers? The chiller no, the, cools the, the three beers is, if I want to take a case. At a time. As soon as you have a cold one, you take a cold one out, you put another one in for cooling. How long does this stay cold? So six I, hours. Six hours. What were the sales? We've done 111,000 to date. That's over the last two years. We started with a Kickstarter campaign. We did 51,000 on Kickstarter. Um, what's the cost? Okay, uh, the chiller you have in front of you, uh, it's, our product cost is awful. Never ever start. I, I understand, I understand. Uh, let, 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 me, let me get there, let me get there. That was about $18 a unit to build. Now, then we had to import the units, 350 a unit. So, so we now you're up to 22 bucks We plus? added those sleeves, added lever, another $11, okay? Now you're up to $32? Up to all the way up to 37 for that one that you have in front to of you. To make it, now, to make it? The cost? Right. Yes. $37? Wow. Let, me, let me get there. That was our first run of inventory. Okay, and since then, we've been able to bring that cost down to $18. The one you have in front of you, we're actually selling those currently into retail at a loss at $30 to prove out the market. This is the first sustainable portable beverage chiller. When you say this is the only sustainable cooler, I'm not so sure yeah, that I that's don't know true. if I buy that. Like, I get I'm saving the plastic bag, but look at the amount of plastic that's in that this. That is built to design to last forever. All the materials are also recyclable. They are all in the product. Too. So is the plastic, isn't it? Only 9% of thro thrown away plastic is recycled. Give me the reason why you decided to go in this space, because you sound like fun guys, great energy. Of all the things you could have done in the world, why sure. did you choose you wanted to make the umpteenth tint cooler? And so Chase and I have had good jobs out of school. He went to work at Google and I went to work at Apple. And two years into that- What did you do for Google and Apple? I was in sales. I was in finance. And so we, we were there for about two years before we came up with this idea. And so for the first two years of this, we were building this on the side, on the nights, on the weekends. Are you still working at your jobs? We're not. No, we quit them two years this ago. We've been doing this full time for this. two years. And are you making money to sustain not yourselves? Yet. No. Not yet. Not profitable yet. We have not taken a salary since we left our jobs two years ago. Do you want me to make a call to get your jobs back? <laughs> no. no. We are I very happy do doing this. We believe in the mission. But you There's guys a massive have amount of plastic careers. Waste. You probably got stock options. You're making yeah. great money. You both have fantastic jobs. We're passionate in about growth this companies. And then, you know that story of the sirens singing on the rocks? <laughs> oh. We felt and it's the a need. cooler. You we look felt the need for the it ourselves. It's right? a cooler uh -huh. pulling you in. 
from your fantastic jobs as stock options. Ooh, the cooler draws That's you right. in. That's then right. the boat we crashes into the rocks, we felt and now you're here with a cooler. <laughs> Who is your number one competitor? Ice. Ice? <laughs> I want you to know, for this season 12 of Shark Tank, I actually went to get some, some anger management therapy. <laughs> because I didn't want to be mean. I wanted to be the new Mr. Wonderful. And I'm working very hard right now to be a nice Mr. Wonderful. I look at this and I say to myself, okay, I'm gonna take this and put this thing in my freezer for extended period of time. I guess I'll take out the roast and the chicken that's there <laughs> and I'll put this in here. And then, and then I'm gonna take three cans of beer, just three, not more. At a time. At a time. At a time. Three at a time. And I'm going, to, I'm going to go somewhere with this thing. Right. 160,000, 160,000 or 15 percent, a million dollars, plus more even. Are you out of your? We're not out of our minds. We like to talk about the value. Why would you do this? I mean, this stuff is tchotchke. They give it away at beer companies. There's a million coolers. Stops up. Oh. It's the same. I, I, I it's so convenient. want to rip you to pieces. I'm it's... trying to rip you to pieces. I just. This what are you is... gonna do, Kevin? You must stop this. There is no hope. This is a really bad idea. Coolers? Why? I, I don't even buy the sustainability thing. There's all kinds of plastic in this thing. I hate it. I'm out. Guys, look. First of all, your presentation sucked. The next time you sell it, sell it. Don't make it worse. Just stick to your features and what sets you apart so people truly understand it quickly. So, well, I think sure. you got a shot. It does everything as advertised, but for those reasons, I'm out. You are clinically insane <laughs> if you're giving these guys reason to go on. I do not doubt that you care about the environment, about that stuff, but your product has to be your protagonist. Your product has to be your hero, and it has to stand on its own merits. The social mission can never be your crutch. The social mission can never be what you go to for a life. It's not a crutch, you it's have, our mission. It's, it's not. It truly it's, is our the mission. It's the reason we're committed to doing this. We um, could have stayed, right? We knew, we knew yeah. this. We had done the math. We could have been millionaires in our early 30s. Not just That's not money. what we wanted to do. We wanted to make a difference in the world, and this Good. is our way to do it. Good. Yeah, no one questions that. But Brian, that. that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it does. You're, Why not? You're, it Why? doesn't. The reason, it's not just because we want to make a difference, it's also because we want to learn. And we're in Google, we're at Google and Apple, we had great jobs, and we're thinking to ourselves, every night when we come home, we're not learning enough. We're here at the, at the office and we're doing the tasks that are being sent our way, but, but we're not learning enough. So it wasn't Brian, just about making a difference, it's you, you about might learning. Be, you might it's be the nicest building. guy in the world, but your story has so many lapses of credibility for me. Who's your competitor? It's ICE. Like, come we on, seriously. A, we know there's a lot of you, competition in the cooler market. We're you, not you shying away from you, that. No, not then, at all. So then this is the, the problem story, we're trying to solve. Then the story pivots to sustainability, and your product is made of plastic and... Plastic that's meant to last but, forever but, and it's fully recyclable. But, but come on, use, I throw this in the... this and, product, then you don't then, have to buy the bag of ice. And then, like, well, that's not really the story. It's about learning something. No, I wasn't learning enough at Apple and Google. Look, putting all that aside, it was a bad presentation. It was a bad presentation. I'm out. Appreciate that. Thank you, Robert. I think Thank it's going to be really down. important for you to get the cost down. Yep. People, when it's affordable enough, they're going to buy in. And I think that you have a shot. What? For me to invest, it's not what I'm interested in investing in. So I'm sorry I'm out. Appreciate that. Thank you. And then there's Daniel. I'm not 100% confident this is a huge business. But I'm very confident that if you continue pursuing your dreams, you're going to figure it out. So I wish you the best. I personally am out. Congrats on what you've accomplished. Good luck, Thank you. guys. Appreciate it. All right. Being on Shark Tank, great experience, but they don't know everything. We already have retail partnerships in place. We're going to put our products on shelves uh, so customers can see them and love them. And the sharks are going to wish that they invested. Why would you encourage them to go on with this? Because I think it's a good looking product. It oh, really is a good on. So how long was your anger management classes? I, listen, I really worked on it. And look, it's, I've been great. I'm really, <laughs> I'm very great. Just give it a break for a sec. Have you flooded it? Yeah. We just stand here on the boat ramp and admire the view. 
The shark's next meal is Peter and Margaret Powell from Cairns in Queensland. Yay! <laughs> We've been married for... <laughs> <laughs> 33 and a half years, not that I'm counting. <laughs> Far North Queensland has the best of everything. We have the reef, we have the rainforest, and there's lots of creeks and rivers. Look at that, beautiful, isn't it? What inspired the product is my passion for the reef. And I just wanted to do something that is a solution to a long-term environmental problem. It's really helpful to boaties and it limits the footprint that you leave behind. It will hopefully be adopted by everybody who owns a boat. We've invested what we have to retire on, really. We put it all into this device. I wonder where the crocodiles are hiding today. He's really brilliant in what he's invented and sometimes in life you don't get enough credit for what you're good at. And so I said to him at the time, even if it cost us our house, we would persevere with this. After working side by side for years, Peter is insisting that Margaret face the sharks alone. The invention is my side, and I feel Margaret's the better person for the shark tank than I am, but I'll, I'll be there for her if she needs me and, and supportive of her. Hi, sharks. My name's Margaret Powell, and I'm really excited to show you our innovative device, the catch and release anchor retrieval system. We're seeking an investment of $200,000 for 20% equity in our business. The catch and release is an anchor retrieval system that allows you to pull your anchor up the way that it went in without causing damage to the reef, even if your anchor's stuck. Yeah, nice. When you pull up your anchor, you're pulling it through whatever it's attached to. So this can cause catastrophic damage. If you have a think about the 850,000 recreational vessels that are registered in Australia, or when they go on a fishing trip, they're pulling up that anchor three or four times every time they go out. It's not just the environment that's at stake here, though. Stuck anchors have been known to capsize boats and to cause damage to those boats or even drownings. In fact, it was an incident on our own boat that started all of this many years ago. So Peter, my husband, decided to set to work and find a better solution. As he would put it, after many years and many, many beers, <laughs> we've come up with a simple, easy to use and environmentally friendly device. It will retrofit to most anchors and is able to be used on recreational vessels up to about 40 feet. Let me show you how it works. So, here I am in my boat. I'm ready to pull up the anchor, and guess what? It's stuck. So, I have a sleeve that stays up in the boat until you're ready to retrieve. The device, as you can see, is on the anchor at all times. So, you let the sleeve down. I'll just do it gently. It compresses the pins, releases the coupling, enables you to pull the anchor up the way that it went in. Oh, do that again. Impressive. That was like a magic trick. You have the sleeve up, you let it down, it compresses the pin and pulls it upside down and pulls the anchor up. That's yeah, well done. Oh, yeah, no, great job. Fabulous. Thank you. OK, Margaret, so you're looking for $200,000 for 20% yeah. of your company, valuing it at a cool $1 million. Yes, that's the actual collar that yeah. slides down. You can see that it has a taper. So every type of anchor you can retrofit it to? Uh, most types of anchor. We haven't found that one that you can't because all that you need is the attachment point at the top of the anchor for the extra piece of chain. Yeah. This is a fantastic bit of kit. Can you go through the economics? What's, what's the cost to manufacture, do you think? About $100 manufacture. 100 bucks, OK. $100 to manufacture, and yeah. the wholesale price, you're thinking, is? Uh, 230 That's 230. average of across the board. Recommend retail is 295 we have actually sold 150. You already yes. tested in the marketplace? Yes. So in terms of getting the price down, yes. you've obviously... Gone offshore. 
what are we going to get it down to? $40 or $50 to make. That would be fantastic if you can do that. Do you have a patent protection on yes, this? Yes, we do. Right. Well, how long ago was that applied for? A long time ago. We have three years left on our patents. Oh, Margaret, three years left. I know. You're killing me, Margaret. What happened in the last 15 years that you only got three years left on your patent? Because we couldn't get a manufacturer to manufacture them properly. Margaret, why did it take you three years to come to Shark Tank? Well, I had no sales initially. It doesn't stop most people walking through that door. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> really, if someone's going to invest in this, they've got to make hay for the next three years. After that point, someone can legally copy it. Yes. Margaret, where's Peter? He's the inventor, right? He's hiding out the back. <laughs> he's hiding? What do you mean he's hiding? Because he's scared of us. He believes he's the inventor and he's done his bit, so I have to do the rest. <laughs> <laughs> Should I go get him? Yeah, yeah bring absolutely. him out. Absolutely. He cannot hide from us. It's safe in here. She's obviously got the US patent, but, you know, three years to run, hello. Hard work. What do you think, Glenn? I like it. My biggest issue, quite simply, is the recommended retail price. I think it's got to be under 100 bucks, and then you're going to roll them off. What's happening? You need to come into the sharks and, and meet them, so if we want to get a deal. Oh, OK. Come on. Let's do it. What if it became a marine standard? If you want to take a fishing boat out, you've got to have this on there. That'll boost sales. Yeah. Peter, we've heard a lot about you and we've seen some of your work. Welcome to the tank. Thank you very much. What inspired you to spend so much time on this? I love the reef. I grew up on the reef. And I wanted to do my little bit time in the world to help this. That's exactly where I got to in my headspace. This is an environmental thing more than anything. So every time you drop an anchor, yeah. you drop it with one of these because you're going to do less impact to the environment. Oh, my word. Yeah. Mate, why'd you sit on it for 17 years? I'm sitting here wanting to do this deal, and I've got a three-year shot clock working against me. Um, I was trying to um, prototype it, and I, was, I sort of, when I wanted something done, I was put on a low priority everywhere I went. So I had to basically build my own shed, get my own machines and do it myself. So you actually acquired all the machine tools to build the prototype yourself? Yeah. Yeah, I thought this was a hobby. This has been a complete obsession. Yeah. Has Margaret been any support? Oh, couldn't do it without her. Um, simple as that. Um, hmm. She's the big driver now, really, you know? Like... It means everything to us because we've basically spent our retirement, so we need to make this work. When you start down the business journey, You've got to be cleverer. Yep. Because the downside of it is bankruptcy, exhaustion of your retirement funds, not leaving legacy for your kids. That's the downside when you stuff it up, right? That's right. Please don't take this too personally, but you've stuffed it up. Margaret and Peter Powell are looking for an investment in their catch and release anchor retrieval system. But with only three years left on their patent, they're struggling to haul in a shark. When you start down the business journey, you've got to be cleverer. Yep. Because the downside of it is bankruptcy, exhaustion of your retirement funds, not leaving legacy for your kids. That's the downside when you stuff it up, right? That's right. Please don't take this too personally, but you've stuffed it up. Margaret, Peter, I'll tell you where I'm at. Look, I love your enthusiasm and your passion for the reef. You know, we should all admire that. And, and your tenacity. 15 years banging away at this, and then in the end having to make it yourself with your own bare hands. Fantastic. Sadly, you tried to make the product yourself yes. and create a business out of the product. What you could have done is find someone who could make it, distribute it, sell it, and give you a piece of the action, a license. Oh, and I'm still prepared for somebody to offer us a royalty and to do that, certainly. 
I wished we'd got to you earlier, but for those reasons, I wish you well, but I'm out. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I so want to do this deal, but every financial part of my brain says, don't, don't, don't. I can't find a reason to do this deal because of the, the three-year shot clock. I'm out. I'm so sorry. I'm out. If, if I can think of a way to help you, I, I will reach out to you. I, I, I want to do something. It won't be an investment today. Yep. Thanks for this. It, it will help save the reef. Thank you. Thank you very much, yeah. You know, I think it's a great invention. I can't get past the fact that you've spent an absolute fortune on patents and haven't done anything with them for 15 to 17 years. I'm out. OK, thanks, Janine. So, Margaret and Peter. Yes, Nan. Hats off to you. It's really fabulous. I happen to be spending six weeks around the corner from you this summer. So, given that I'm going to be in your region for six weeks, I'm really happy to mentor you. That would be fabulous. So, let me spend some time with you and let's see what we can come up with. That would be wonderful. But for this deal, right now, I'm out. So, four sharks are out, just one shark left. So, I keep reminding myself, <sighs> I'm an investor, not a charity. Yeah. And the investor side of my brain, which is the nasty side, <laughs> then works out how to position so that if this goes well, I get the upside, but I also minimise the risk on the downside. This has got the environmental thing, you know. That... So I'm just struggling, deeply struggling. I'm going to throw an offer at you. I want 100% of the company for 200,000 with a 5% royalty all the way through. Forever and ever. Can we, just, can we just restart the offer because this has never been offered in the tank. I'm buying the company. The 200,000 goes to them, it doesn't go into the company. Is that what it is, Glenn? Yeah. You get all your money back and maybe some upside if he gets it off the ground 5%. Normally, I'd tell you to run away from that deal and that it's a load of crap. But you want to save the reef. You've only got three years to go, and you've done your retirement money on it. So I actually have to say it's not a bad offer. I've got to look at the exact reason why this has been going on, and I've stuck at it, and Margaret stuck at it too. It's, it's about our dream, and um, my passion for the reef. I think, well, I know you have got more of a chance to fulfil this dream that I'll have in the amount of time we've got left. So for that reason, I'm happy with you, mate. Good. Hey, well done. You just won the lottery. That is <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> well, I know that was a very, very hard decision, but yeah. I, I oh, think it's Sorry, Pete, for a vet is a nice Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. Sorry, I'll tell you what that Well done, you guys. Well, you just did that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Margaret. Congratulations, guys. Really, congratulations. It's fantastic. Wow. <laughs> you sold your company. I know. Who would have thought that? I get, were you expecting that at all? No, as not at all. Tank today? Not at all. I always knew that having only three years left was going to be an issue. And um, yeah, but that's awesome. Can you imagine what it's like for them? Amazing. Life changing. Today they came in to the tank and their life forever is changed. Because you will make a difference to the planet. I'm happy, yeah. It's for the passion of the reef and the environment out there and um, that's that's my dream. They loved you and your product and yep, um, that's great. All the best for the future, hey? Thank yeah, you. Thank you very, thank you very much. much. Thank you. Next up are entrepreneurs who believe they've designed a finer, more functional piece of golf equipment. Hi, 
Hi Sharks, my name is Eric Williams, Creative Director at Kronos Golf. And I'm Philip Lapuz, Founder and Designer at Kronos Golf. We're seeking $150,000 for a 15% stake in our company. We're an indie putter company that manufactures the most precise putters in the world. You might have heard the phrase, drive for show and putt for dough. Putting accounts for half the shots of an average golfer. So why are we blowing our money on drivers and shoddy putters? That is where Kronos comes in. We mill our putters down to one one thousandth of an inch to make sure our putters are perfectly balanced. We start off with a solid block of steel and mill it for over two hours, transforming it from stage one, a solid block of steel, to stage two, a roughly milled putter, to stage three, a more refined milled putter. It's a slow, labor-intensive process, but it's the right way to make a well-balanced putter. From there, each one is individually hand-worked, including delicate deburring, polishing, and painting, all the while preserving that critical balance. The truth is, there's no putter out there that'll make you better overnight, but ours will help you putt more consistently, and that might be the only difference between winning and losing. Plus, they're super sexy. So let's get the devil on the dance floor and give these putters a try. Kevin, can we ask you to come on up here? All right. Let's get to your ball. Now, Robert, note how I'm holding the club. Should we duck, Kevin? I'm, I'm feeling one with the ball at this moment. Watch this go in. Wow. Oh, wow. The green's a little close. slow. Phil, your premise was an awful golfer like Kevin <laughs> would be better with your putter. Here's what we believe in. A lot of people believe that they can buy their way into golf or another sport, whatever it is. They're looking for some sort of technology to save them. And the appreciation for the practice and the work that goes into it ends up being lost. For that reason, what you're seeing here, our putters are simplistic and they refer to older time. Would you agree? They're fairly yes. simple. It all comes down to the milling process. But how do you get your story out? Yeah, how Deal do you with the distribution that? problem. Well, okay, I'll awesome. answer that. Okay, I want to buy a Kronos and I'm sitting in New York. Right. Where do I go? About two years ago, we went to the PGA show and we got distribution for Japan and Scotland. But nobody stateside was interested? They're interested, but there's that issue of people believe that they need approval from a pro. It's a proven model. That's how people sell golf products. What are your sales? Just year to date, we've done $260,000, and we've done 95% of that to Japan. They really understand the craft. So why is it working in Japan? Do you have your own displays? No, or it's this exact it? brand. There's a different psyche in Japan than in America. We've talked about America. They look for that validation in a pro player. In Japan, they have a long history of art and the delicacy that goes into creating things. And on that level, they appreciate what we create at face value. Well, how they much does oh, it second. cost relative to a normal putter? So our cheapest putter sells for $500. Wow. So you're wow. a premium. You're oh, really goodness. a premium. Can I see one? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let's discuss the name for a second. Okay. I happen to be an expert in Greek mythology. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. So you know that Kronos, he took a sickle and he castrated his father and threw them into the ocean. I'm aware of that. Now, what would that have anything to do with a putter? So Kronos' time, his reign, was called the Golden Age. We want to go back to the golden age of golf. That's why we're wearing this attire. Hang on a sec. Everything you're talking about, once I feel it, and look at the weight of it. I mean, it's it's a lot better than any other standard putter. But why you. couldn't you get distribution here in the US? We could advertise and say that we've got the greatest putters. You have to well, give a free putter matter. to every single pro shop. That's so a huge can you, problem. Can you or at least to the people on the PGA. Yes, that's exactly. not a problem to get a pro. It's just how much do you want to pay them, right? Eric, $500 it sells for at retail. Tell me what it costs you to make, and tell me what you sell to the stores at. Sure, cost roughly is about $120 per club to make. But well, we sell them wholesale for around, our cheapest one is $200 to $230. How much money have you raised so far? None, it's really my money. I worked in consulting before this, and How I- How much money did you put into it? We have about $100,000 into it. Guys, let me, let me get things rolling here. Um, have you ever heard of Dallas National? No, I'm not. It's one of the nicest courses in the country. It opened in Dallas probably 10 years ago, and one of my friends, you got to join, you got to join. I joined 10 years ago. I've never been, because I hate golf. For that Perfect. reason, I'm out. Oh, okay. man. <laughs> but I wish you guys the best, and congratulations. Great, that has nothing to do with you guys. One thing that we touched on. Can I interject? On... Sure. Yes. Here. 
I, among everybody up here, should love this sport more than anybody else because it saved my marriage. It gets rid of my husband every weekend. <laughs> but I hate golf. I couldn't imagine supporting it. I'm out. All right, thank you. Thanks. So last year, we did something in Japan which helped our sales a lot. But how you haven't solved the distribution problem. For the US. There are cases where something catches fire in golf and everybody buys it. Sure. I mean, lightning strikes, and maybe it could strike you, but it's a long shot. Two sharks are out. Philip and Eric only have three more chances to make a deal for their handcrafted putter company, Kronos. There are cases where something catches fire in golf and everybody buys it. Sure. But it's a long shot. You know what? I think your message is clear. Quality, old time, beautiful, elegant. You, if you want to keep that upscale craftsmanship, if that's what's important, then you have a niche market that's going to go for that. I think Japan is the way to go, because Japan is telling you, we love it. I'm out. Tell me a little bit about you guys. What motivates you guys to want to start your own business? I, uh... Um, I'm engaged, uh, to a... <sighs> As I'm engaged to a... I'm engaged, and my fiance lives in Japan, and she can't come out here unless I make this happen. I could have... Just continued my job as a consultant, making fine money. <laughs> but this is my dream. <laughs> why can't she come here unless this works? Yeah, why? Because I want this to be stable, and... You can't afford her to come here. That's why I'm here today. It could wait, but I mean, I'm a oh, woe is me. Like I can't get married, but it's like, do I have to choose between my company, my dreams, and my fiance? She's sitting there waiting. It's been two year, two years since I proposed to her, and at that time I was working in consulting and. Her parents approved, and now they don't approve. They think I'm crazy. And because of the because you started a business? Yeah, I, I think in their culture they're a little bit more conservative, in the sense that they value someone who goes nine to five job or so culturally it's value. hard. Yeah. It's moving. I gotta tell you. I think you ought to sit tonight and write her parents a thank you note. And it ought to start like this. Thank you for the insults, but not thinking I'm worthy enough for your daughter. Watch me now and watch what I do. There's no better motivation in the world than somebody who insults you. Those parents are guaranteeing your success. And if your fiance doesn't marry you, I will marry you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Move to Japan quickly. <laughs> look, I mean, look, your, your, your story really know. moved me. I got to tell you, it's, it's painful to listen ask, to that. Ask him to put his money where his mouth is. That, that's the challenge. <laughs> that's right. If you were crying, Phil, I was. I was out. moved by that story, but now I'm back in reality. You know, I'd love to figure out how to do this, but I think it's. It's a very, very difficult task. You don't want to let emotions make financial decisions, and I don't. That's what's kept me true as a great investor. I'm out.
Philip. You have, you have one Eric, shark left. Eric, you have one shark left. What are you gonna do? Look, I. in the six years we've been up here, here's what I've learned. People that succeed in life tend to have a need for something greater than themselves. I have a huge chip on my shoulder. The guys always make fun of me. It always goes back to the need to prove my parents' life. You have your own drive, and that's never going to go away. You're always going to work a little harder and, and keep going, but it takes time. You're not going to change the consumer market like this. This is going to take time. That's the thing that we have. That's what I have, and I'm willing to put in, and I think you know, sometimes you make an investment because you see a tipping point. My only point to you is there's a tipping point and it's far away. It's going to take time to recoup this. $150,000 for 35%. Yowie. <sighs> Take a second to talk about it. Sure. My hands on the middle. So, one way was 30% to the show. Yes. The sort of demo way the car. Taka, can I? No, I think we'd like to counter at 25%. Meet you in the middle. I'll do 150,000 for 30 percent. We we just have one last question for you. Do you want your putter now or later with your name engraved on it? Because we'd love to do a deal with you. Oh. All right. I'll, I'll take all of them. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> it's beautiful. Congratulations. Good luck, guys. Thank you very much. The next time we see you, you're married. <laughs> How do you say good job in Japanese? Yoku gambata, yoku dekita. Yoku dekita. Yoku dekita. Yoku dekita. Gatta. Gatta ze. Next into the tank is Laurie, who's staking her business future on catching the sharks in a friendly mood. I do have a potty mouth. Hopefully that will make me a pot of gold. And hopefully they'll like my products. We're inappropriate, so. Not everyone's going to like our products. I hope they have a sense of humour, because if they don't, it's going to be a disaster. Hello, Sharks. My name's Laurie, and I'm the founder and owner of the Inappropriate Gift Co. I'm here today seeking a $100,000 investment in exchange for 10% equity in the business. The Inappropriate Gift Co. solves the problem of where to go if you're looking for a unique gift for a friend or family member with a cheeky and inappropriate sense of humour. <laughs> and we bring you a one-stop shop, a curated online store specialising in inappropriate gifts. We source our gifts from a range of Australian and international suppliers as well as create our own product range that you won't find anywhere else. The idea for the Gift Co came after a particularly stressful week at work as an HR manager. <laughs> and I thought there must be more fun to life than this. <laughs> so on the 1st of November 2016, I launched my very first basic website with 10 products. Since then, we have sold over 23,600 products to over 9,600 customers across 36 different countries. Mm. Revenue to date has been $470,000. Wow, impressive. The Inappropriate Gift Co is at the perfect stage to scale up. And we are looking for your investment, as well as your expertise, to help us reach our big, hairy, audacious goal, which is to be the global home of inappropriate gifts. Like it. <laughs> so, Sharks, who wants to be inappropriate with me? <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh, my God. <laughs> that's what I think it is. It's yeah. whiskey. Yeah, there you go. Whiskey in a bag. Lori, that's fantastic. I'll uh, give you all a goodie bag as well. Oh, I've got thank a goodie you. Bag. Yeah. OK, so, what do we got? I hope you have a sense of humour, Sharks. You're about to find out. We're about to find out. Don't piss me off. I'm skilled at neutering. Very good. Spot on. <laughs> 
Everyone knows Naomi. She is usually effing fabulous. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> I sit next to an idiot. <laughs> what is your say? What have I got? Oh. Oh. Yeah, I, I didn't get one. Bath. No, I didn't get one. Oh. No, I didn't get one. Oh, he's lying. He's so lying. Steve. <laughs> well done, Laura. Well done. Good job. You're looking for an investment of $100,000 for 10% valuing your business at a million dollars. Yes. And so when did you step full time into this business? I finished work as an HR manager in November 2017. I've got a, um, a great partner called Budget Ben. I love him to pieces. And he said, honey, you can do whatever you want as long as you bring home net the same amount of money as you're making in your HR job. And so, just quickly, looking at the numbers, $470,000 in 15 months is spectacular for a starting business. Thank well you. Well done. Thank you. What is the net on that? So, I work on a um, gross margin of 40% and a net margin of 30%. Essentially, you're making before you pay yourself about 150 grand a year. Yes. Okay, cool. What's, what's in your gross margins? Do you, do you include customer acquisition in your gross No, expenses? I haven't actually looked at my customer acquisition rate yet because I haven't done any... I suppose, advertising, paid advertising. So it's all been organic so You've done no paid advertising? No, it's been organic wow. through my you've social media. You've done 470K in 15 months with no paid advertising. Yes. One of my um, posts on social media went um, global, so it hit nearly 9 million views. What was it? I just posted one of my mugs. The mug was, I'm not feeling very talky today, and then there was um, some swear words after that. Well, come on, give us a hit at both barrels. Give us. A okay, I'm not feeling very talky today. Off you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that sounds nice. Do they come in a set? <laughs> <laughs> I need, I need four. No, I think for the first time in four years, has been genuinely funny. <laughs> 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 um, how do you achieve your big hairy audacious goal? Sure. So our um, plans. We're on track, regardless of um, of, of this to reach $1 million worth of sales at the end of this year. And then 2019 is 3 million, and then 2020, 20. So we want 20 million okay. in the year 2020. 2020, 20, I like that. That's fantastic. Um, and in order to do that, we will need North America, um, as well as the UK. All of you have taken a business this size and scaled it up nationally, internationally, and probably most importantly, profitably. We will do it, but we will do it a lot quicker and a lot smarter and probably lose a lot less money doing it with any of your help. So, Laurie, you're a no-brainer. Any one of us could invest in you, get our money back. I see that. You're organised, you're buttoned down, and I'm sure you'd be delight to work with, not to mention a little amusing at times. Thank you. OK, who's in? So, so Laurie, I'm, I'm in. Uh, I'll go the 100K for 20%. 100k, 18%. Ooh. 100k, 15%. <laughs> well, I was going to be a lot harsher than that, so I'm going to actually bow out because I, I know where you're going is going to be a hard journey. You're going to burn some serious cash as you scale up, but you have to. Um, good luck. I'm out. Thanks, Glenn. I know the road head ahead for you, and you need way more than $100,000 to do that in terms of really the scale. So the deal that I'm going to suggest to you is $100,000 for 15%, but then another $100,000 for another 10% if we deliver to you and double the size of your business inside of 12 months. So let me summarise, Laurie. Steve's offered you 20% for your 100,000. Janine, 18%. I've offered you 15%. And Naomi's offering you the 100,000 for the 15%, but she's also offering another 100,000 in finance capital. I've got 100 for 12 and a half percent. Are you on Amazon? No. I'm back in. I'm going to match Steve, 100K for 12 and a half percent, because I'll introduce you to the Amazon guys. OK, what are you going to do? Can I talk to my husband? Oh, he's here. Do you is want he? to bring him out just to bring stir him, him up a bit? Don't sure. talk to your husband. Budget sure. Ben. Budget Ben. <laughs> Come on, Budget Ben, bring him out. All right, go talk to your husband. Thank you. Let's have a look at this stuff. How'd you get 
go. I got deals from all five of them. <sighs> <laughs> I've got to choose which one. All right, OK. Give so, me I've got Naomi at 100,000 for 15%, and then um, she will bring an extra 100,000. Andrew, 15% for 100 grand. Okay, that's good, that's good. Um, Glenn is 12.5%, and so is Steve, and Jimmy is 18%, so. All for 100 grand, so 18%? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I love all of them. Yeah. Um, but let's go. Okay. Let's do a deal. You're cooked by Japan, by the way. Okay. This is Ben. Hello, Hello Budget Ben. ben. Hey, ben. Budget ben. the tank. Budget Thank you. Ben, fantastic. Budget Ben. That's it. <laughs> Someone has to be. <laughs> That's good. So you must be very proud of her. I am very extremely proud. She's, She's done an amazing She's... job here today. We have a lot of people stand there. They don't know what they're talking about. They don't have their numbers. There's too much ego, not enough drive. Yeah. She's got it all, you know. You've you got the right yeah. partner. Laurie, I've decided to make my deal easier. Oh. And just offer two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for twenty-five percent in one up, because you're going to need the money. So you've got to enjoy the journey as much as the results. You enjoy the journey more with me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> Naomi, I would love to work with you. Oh! Uh, some things, some things come and go. Well, well done, Laurie. Thank you. Good job. Yeah. Well she only ever had eyes for me, just pointing out. Look, Have a drink. Have you? a drink really? on us. Yeah. Hey, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That was so much fun. Thanks for the gift. Well done. Well done. Hey, well done. Really well done. Well done. Mm. Damn. Damn. <laughs> no, no. You know what? She wore red for red. She, she, she picked values. She, she picked wanted Naomi. Yeah. We had no hope. That was That's fantastic. Awesome. That was brilliant. Loved every minute of that. Uh, Wanted Naomi because it's an obvious choice. You know, she's in yeah. the gifting business. I'm so happy. First into the Shark Tank is Aaron Krauss, who believes his product will make everyday cleaning easier. Hi, Sharks. I'm Aaron Krauss from Philadelphia, and I'm known as the daddy of the Scrub Daddy the cutest but most high-tech scrubbing tool in the world. Today, I'm seeking a $100,000 investment in exchange for 10% equity in the Scrub Daddy business. It's the greatest kitchen scrubbing tool you ever used because Scrub Daddy completely changes its texture by just adjusting your water temperature. Let me show you how that works. Here I've got some hot water. Here I've got some cold water. When I immerse the Scrub Daddies in the hot and cold water, a complete transformation occurs. Now, to show you that, I've got 10-pound weights. Here, under the 10 pounds, it's soft and compressible, and that's like a sponge. That's for your gentle scrubbing applications. But here, check that out. It's hard and firm. That's gonna be for heavy-duty scrubbing applications. We burned on brown and gravy, tomato sauce, cheese, and mustard onto a glass stove top and a stainless steel pan. I'm gonna take the scrub die, and you're gonna see it's just gonna attack right into that burned-on mess, scrubbing it right off. And remember, I'm just using water here. There's no chemicals at all, and it's gonna cut right through that. It won't scratch any of your surfaces, but it will clean them beautifully. Now, Scrub Dye is not really smiling anymore, so I'm gonna put him here in the warm water, and in just a couple seconds, voila. He's back to bright, fresh, and clean every time. Sharks, that's not just another smiling face. You put it on your hand, you can get to the bottom and clean the sides in one move. And that smiling mouth, that cleans spoons, knives, forks, spatulas, even large serving spoons on both sides at the same time. Sharks, with your help, scrub that I will be scrubbing and smiling in every kitchen in the world. Woo! Wow. Wow. Scrub Daddy. I never witnessed a live in commercial. That was fantastic. <laughs> that was incredible. Do you have samples? I do. Where are you selling this now? Thank you. Well, currently, we have it in five supermarkets in the Philadelphia area. We also sell it on our website. I've been on QVC three times over about three months. And how'd it go? Fantastic. They've invited me back over and over. And every time I go on, they reorder 30% more than the last time. So Scrub Daddy is humming. And what were your total sales? QVC, wholesale? Just north of $100,000. Only in four months. Do you have a patent on this? 
I actually have a patent. I have two more pending. We have the trademark. We have domain names. OK, Aaron. What do you need the $100,000 for? What I want to do is set up an independent manufacturing facility with automated equipment. Why do you need to go into your own facility? The biggest problem is I'm on their time schedule. Are you saying that you could be making more revenue if you were 24-7 making scrub daddies? The way QVC is going, and we're just about to launch in a whole bunch of stores, we're going to need that capacity. And I have 18 years experience running a manufacturing plant that runs 24 hours a day. I know exactly what I need to do to make this thing really efficient. And I'm looking to get a strategic partner who can open this up into the retail stores. I'm only in five supermarkets. That's it. What's your cost? The cost to make one's about a dollar. What are you selling them for? About $2.80. Wholesale? Wholesale. This needs to be in every supermarket, drugstore, Walgreens, it's so CBS. expensive. Mrs. Slabinski goes to the store and picks this off the shelf and says, hey, it's a piece of foam with a smiley face on it. It costs two cents to make in China. That's what she's thinking. Because a Brillo pad, which is a traditional product, is what? A 20, 20 percent? You're of comparing the price? it to the lowest end of the lowest end. You take it up to the highest end. Talk about the, the, the ones like Dobie pads or other pads out there that are, you know, brand Scrub names. Daddy, I, I think you've done a great job today, but I don't know if it's gonna work in retail. I don't I don't buy into that vision. Just in the packaging. I just don't know if I see Rob, the difference. Robert, I, it doesn't sell on a shelf, correct. But if you put it in display shippers, which we built, these beautiful cardboard display shippers, and it communicates the message to every customer. You're end caps. You're going to have to pay for those things. It's well, hard to get them, even if you pay for them. Great job today, but I, I don't see the retail vision. I'm out. I understand. I like the product. I think you've, you're doing great things. You're doing it the exact right way. But when I hear QVC, no disrespect to Lori, when a company's sales are completely dependent on QVC, that's a disaster waiting to happen. I've got 3,000 stores lined up right now. We're going to be in 3,000 stores. I understand. But even, OK, put aside QVC. You're still a one product company, right? Not for long. We've got Scrub Mommy. We've got Scrub Baby for doing baby bottles. <laughs> I've got a holder that sits it on your sink and it's got drains in the legs. You don't understand who you're dealing with. I am. I am <laughs> you're right. Oh. I'm not doubting the scrub market. I'm not doubting you are the scrub daddy, but I'm not a scrub pimp. So I'm out. That hurts, Mark. I wanted to work with you so bad. Mark, QVC does over eight billion in sales a year, and I've done over 500 million myself. Yes, you have, and you rotate products in and out of there, and once those products are out, they're out. How about this deal? 100,000 for 50%. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start the bidding there. All right, you're out. <laughs> You know, I'm somebody who can paint any picture, and I think that Laurie is a vicious, backstabbing shark. That's all true. But sometimes I love her as well, because she is the QVC queen. So I'm offering $50,000 for 15% if you can raise the rest from Laurie and if she wants to do business with you. Well, here's the thing. You've heard me say before, I can tell instantly if it's a hero or a zero. And I think what you've got here is a hero. No offense, Damon, I don't need you. You don't. My offer is $100,000 for 30%. I will get you into infomercial right away and I'm pretty confident that we could get this into all retail stores across the country within literally weeks. I'll tell you what I'll do for you. I'll give you $100,000. We'll never agree on what percentage I should get. I'm going to change the model completely. You're going to keep the whole company. But I want to be your financier. I want you to give me 50 cents on every unit sold until I get the 100K back. Then it drops to 10 cents in perpetuity. He just wants to increase your cost of goods sold by 50%. Nothing, right? Why well, give up 30% of your company? Just to sweeten the pot a little bit, I'm going to give you $150,000 for 25%. Whoa. 
What are you going to do? I'm changing my offer, actually. $100,000, but for 25%. The experience, the connections, everything that I have, it will be successful. I am partnered with the best of them. Why give up any part of Scrub Daddy? Think of the relationship you have with this sponge. <laughs> You're selling this thing out, and it's going to cry. It won't be happy anymore. QVC, <laughs> infomercial, and into every single retailer worldwide. That's the power of what we can do just by one infomercial spot. I can get you there. I mean, wait, wait, wait I'm not already. done. We've I'm not heard done. that already. We've heard that already. What, I, what, I want the answer to one question, all right? Do you think 25% of the equity in your company is worth more or less than 10 cents a unit in perpetuity? And he's this all is, talk. Where is he going to take you? It doesn't matter. Ask it does the, matter. Because you can take, are there, you, can take, you keep 25% of this business, which may sell 10 million of these, and you keep it all for yourself. But you're going to be keeping nothing because he doesn't know how to get you this mean, out you there You haven't had any success. You're an idiot. You don't know what to do. I know what to do. Exactly. You just did a half a billion dollar deal with Walmart. Half a billion. But that doesn't so mean anything. What product retail. is it? OK, I, I'd like to review Wait a the, second. the, the Let offers the that keep changing. speak. And it's saying, Lori. go with Kevin. <laughs> Aaron, there are like children up here. It's awful. Let's recap. Yeah, let's recap, are. please. 150000 for 25% okay. from Damon. Kevin $100,000 for no percent and a tiny tithe of 10 cents. You keep all the equity. Lori is offering you 100,000 for 25%. I offered 150 last time. Whoa, hang I, on. I didn't hear that 100, Lori. Oh, well, I changed my mind. 150,000 for 25%. I'll make you a millionaire within a year. So mine just went to 175. Whoa! Is up to 175? Yeah. Mine just went to two. Whoa! The good news is, I just made you an extra 100,000. I'm out. I wanted to stick it to her. Ouch. Wow. I'll drop the 50 cents down to 25 cents until the 100K is recovered, and then go to 10 cents. Will you go to 5 cents? Seven and a half, it's a deal. OK, Aaron, you've got two offers on the table. What are you going to do? You have to make up your mind right now. You don't see the benefit of having me as a partner. I never said that. You need to tell me right now whether you're going with me or not, or I'm out. I'm here for you. I think your deal is awesome. Um, the equity amount is, is too much. Would you consider coming down to 20? You know what, I will. I'll go to 20. We got a deal. Got a deal. All right. Good. Way to go, Aaron. Woo! Thanks, Laura. Sure. I'm so excited. You are dead to me, and the sponge is dead. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Scrub Daddy, you suck. That is awesome. Got a deal, Lori? It's, it's a dream come true. It's absolutely a dream come true. I don't care how much money you have. I'm so satisfied to know that you lost an extra 100. I know you'll get me back. It's going to be a just... gangbuster, huge hit in infomercial. Good deal, Lori. It's a great deal.